All right, so we have another balance patch for Dragon Ball The Breakers that I wanted to take a look at. Uh, as of recording this, this just came out uh, yesterday, today, and I played a few games, and I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, one interesting thing is in this paragraph right here. We've confirmed that the balance in the victory rate between survivors and raiders is largely consistent with our intended design based on the recent data outlined above. Okay, so what that means is that we are probably not going to get to a point where we go uh, back to the pre-patch, the first patch that kind of um, made Raiders more OP. So these numbers right here is what they like, and this is what they want to stick with. Okay, so let's look at these new charts. Uh, orange is Raider total victory, all survivors defeated, 42%. That is, uh, that is a lot. For everybody, for like to wipe out everybody, that is a big number. Yellow, Raider victory, survivors escape. They don't even say how many escape, they just say some. So if you put that together, what is that? 52, 61%. So 61.5% um, is the Raiders win rate right now. 38.5 being the survivor win. And then they have this chart right here for the survivor win rate. So 19.8% is defeating the Raider, 12.9% is survivor victory with the Super Time Machine, and I believe prior to the update, they didn't actually post this, but I believe Super Time Machine was actually the most common win prior to this update. So now everyone's just ganging it up on the Raider, and then survivors escaping um, using the, the regular Time Machine is 11.2%. So overall, I think the Super Time Machine needs to be up a little bit. The fact that they're killing the Raider this often is kind of concerning. And gr granted, I don't want the Raiders to get more powerful. But honestly, I'd rather see the Super Time Machine have a bigger win rate. But that is what it is. Okay, so let's look at the adjustments to the Escape Time Machine. Slightly increase the rate at which the gauge to call the Time Machine fills up. So basically, you could call in the Escape Time Machine faster. Increase the number of Escape Time Machine beacons that appear during the search phase when the number of remaining survivors decreases. So what this is, is at the, um, when there's only three survivors left, they allow you to call in the escape time machine instead of going for the regular super time machine. And they just gave you an extra beacon because what the Raider would do, what I would do is wait right until there's three left and then destroy one of the escape zones. So there wasn't a way to get out. Now I have a problem with this is because survivors have, for the most part, been forgetting about attacking the raider forgetting about the super time machine all they want to do is get to the escape time machine and there no one's really helping out and i'm guilty of this myself because at the end of the day you look at a level 60 boo who's got full health uh who's level three what are you going to do to the guy so why even why even fight for the super time machine i mean it, it makes it pretty pointless and i hate that they made it easier to escape um because it encourages some shitty plays and as we all know as i went over my last video um, the last two videos, that using the escape time machine does not actually count as a win. You go to Oolong, it doesn't count as a win. At, at the end of the day, it's just a cope to say, oh, well, at least I escaped. But at the end, the Raider beat everybody, and it's not even close. Okay, so the final thing they talked about here is percentage of each Raider's victories. Now, this is something I've been talking about for a while, that Cell is the least powerful Raider of all, and I believe he's the most balanced. And at, here they have the win percentages. So total victory, 39.2 for Cell. Freeze is 42.6. Boo is 48.6. So Boo is the highest winning Raider when it comes to total victory. And I believe that has to do with his um, transition from level 3 to level 4 where he absorbs everyone into him. And there's no way to escape. So if you look at Frieza, he has the highest Raider victory where survivors escaped. And I believe this is due to him not having key tracking, unlike Cell and Boo. So um, whenever it comes down to it, he can't really see which survivors are going for which beacons. Something that Cell can do at level 2 and Boo can do at level 3 going forward. Based on this chart, they decided to make some changes to Cell. And I honestly believe that the Raiders like Frieza and Boo needed to get nerfs to be uh, more on par with Cell. However, they decided to give Cell a buff. So they decreased the amount of evolution gauge required from, uh, to progress from evolution 3 to 4. Increased the amount of evolution energy gain when Cell's passive life absorption is powered up. And I was playing earlier today. I got to play Cell twice. And my um, my absorption gauge, whatever, I completely maxed it out at level 20. 
From level three to four, I only need to kill two survivors. So Cell's gonna hit level four super fast. Now, is this gonna change this chart right here? I honestly don't think so. Because if a Cell was gonna hit level four, um, either way, it wasn't gonna, if a Cell hit level three, it wasn't really gonna matter because Cell at level three is still a monster, even though he has his uh, Kamehameha beam, which makes him slower when it comes to chasing down survivors. So I don't think this is going to be a change that's going to um, help with this. All it's going to do is just make players who actually know how to play Cell, like myself, just make it easier on us. It's not going to help out any of the lower players. So going back to this chart right here, we see that the um, Raiders total win rate, what did I say, is 63%, 63.5. And honestly, that's not going to be a, a static number. The That's going to change. Because the problem is right now is a bunch of people aren't really experienced with the Raider which is the only way people are winning anymore. I mean, it, it, you're going to be hard-pressed to find someone who's level 20 or higher as a Raider losing to other survivors. It's just going to be the new players who playing for the first time, free play days, things like that, who don't have uh, experience playing the game. But the more and more people get more experience with Raiders, um, this number is going to completely engulf this one. So they made changes based on the now, and it's going to be... It's going to be interesting because survivors are just going to start winning less and less and they're going to have to do another balance patch update. Um, so I honestly believe that once this once this gets a little bit too high, they're going to nerf the Raiders a little bit. But that's going to take some time uh, once everybody gets to play Raider more and get more um, accustomed to how to play Raider. Because the thing is, you only get to play Raider if you have a Raider priority. Maybe uh, once every three to six games, uh, six being the higher end. Recently, I've been able to get in at level th uh, at three priority and four priority, but I play on Xbox, and right now they have the free day or free play weekends on Xbox. So I think that has a lot to do with it, which is also going to skew the numbers for the survivor win rate for a little bit. So it's probably going to be another month or two before we see any meaningful adjustments or uh, see what the actual win rate is going to be once people get more familiar with the game. Because even if you're the best survivor, you can only you know make it so far. The best you're going to do is be able to use the escape time machine. So this number is just going to absolutely go away. Like it's going to be invisible in the pie chart in the next two months. But yeah, that's my uh, thoughts on it. Thanks for watching.